It's no shock to anybody that I like Halloween. I like to pack as much spooky stuff in there as possible and try to get an overload. And the main medium that's associated with the month of October and the Halloween holiday is horror. That's the reason I cover the Gara franchise every October. Cause for the most part, it really leans into its horror tones and stories. But there's another element I love in October and that's the downright weird. I love things like David Lynch movies, campy horror films. Why? musical horror, games like Deadly Premonition or Frog Fractions. For me, all of that stuff also fits into my own personal Halloween motif. So when I see two DVD covers for a movie called Executive Koala, one looking like this and one looking like this, there's no way I'm not watching it. Executive Koala is directed by Minoru Kawasaki. And that makes sense because he mostly champions parody and surreal horror films. He worked on Ultraman Tiga and gained his fame with his movie, The Calamari Wrestler, which is exactly what it sounds like. As well as my favorite title in the history of titles, Crab Goalkeeper. Again, what you would guess, a crab playing soccer with Kamen Rider Ichigo as the coach. I'm sure I'll talk about it one day. I don't exactly know how to describe the story of Executive Koala. And honestly, I don't think I understand if there even is a story in Executive Koala. Tamor is an executive, uh, anamorphic koala. Why is he a koala? I don't know, he just is. He's an executive at the pickle company and he's trying to seal a deal with a Korean kimchi company. I know, riveting stuff. The costume can be summed up as kind of a mascot costume. And in all fairness, it's pretty cute. I mean, look in his eyes. But be careful, because behind those eyes is a stone cold killer. At least that's what the movie wants to put into question. Tamora works a lot of late nights and is highly dedicated to his job, but you see him shooting off a few texts to his girlfriend who surprises him. And after a late night at work, they go home and, you know, and she ends up being killed. And now he has a detective who regards him as suspect number one, digging into the truth of the executive koala. Summed up simply, that's it. That's the story. But as it unfolds, you're welcome to a fever dream of movie styles and departures from reality. It goes from a murder mystery, to a business drama, to a slasher movie, and to a full-on musical exposition dump, and then straight to a prison drama. And of course, a martial arts movie climax. From beginning to end, the movie just never really stops changing. At some point, you might ask yourself, why? Why is he a koala? Why is no one else a koala or another animal? I mean, there is the boss who is a bunny. And who is this frog convenience store clerk? And why does he suddenly reappear clapping at the end? But don't worry, because all of your questions are completely useless and this movie will not answer a damn thing by the time it ends. So just enjoy the Korean martial arts scene while you get kimchi flashes. It's a movie from 2005 and it does not have a large budget. The colors are bland and nothing really pops, but something about that makes it more enjoyable for me. When Executive Koala goes into a rampage, his eyes turn red and that's about as technical as it gets, with maybe an exception of some green screen fight scenes. I would say it feels amateur at best, but really honestly, if you're watching this, you're already here for that. This isn't a story that needed a man in a koala outfit to be told. If they were all just normal people, it would have absolutely no bearing on the rest of the movie. It gives me the feeling that Minora just really appreciates practical effects and just wanted a guy in a koala outfit. The mascot outfits are really fun in that low budget kind of way. The koala head gets the most use and can emote a bit with its eyes and open its mouth a little bit. But it also comes off like a kid trying to make his stuffed animal feel like it's alive. There are times that executive koala screams out and because the head has such poor articulation, it really just comes off as hilarious. The bunny and frog outfits are definitely secondary and barely emote. And there's something about the bunny having this old salary man voice that just hits me weird. It makes me so uncomfortable and it's so great. This isn't a movie for everyone and I really don't even know who this movie's for. Maybe it's me, maybe he just made this for me cause I, I had a great time. It was a truly stupid ride that made absolutely no sense. It passes by like a fever dream and once it's ended, you don't even know if Tamora killed people or not. But look, this isn't the kind of movie that you watch for a good story. It's the kind of movie you just put on with a group of friends in your living room and ridicule it for being so 
real god dang ridiculous. If you don't like fun, maybe don't watch this movie. But if you're like me and sometimes during the spooky month, you just want something absolutely stupid and absurd, I can't think of a better thing to watch than Executive Koala. Except Crab Goalkeeper. That's also excellently stupid. Happy Halloween, everyone. I'm Hi-C, and I hope you keep watching.